looks like we have a very large territory. This is clearly a large percentage of the public left hand one. Let's bring more to CT. Grace, we're here at St. John's. Yes. We're going to examine you for a second, okay? Good morning. Peace, my brother. <laughs> Good morning. Our reflection this morning is about transformation and innovation. We strive to improve the health and quality of life in our communities. So part of this is just getting our joints and our muscles warmed up since surgery is very physical. Nice yeah, schedules are going on. Custom oncology, general, a lot of ortho, and then some pulmonary. Any hearts there? Hopefully not. At the beginning of every meeting, we always have a reflection and it's supposed to be something that uplifts us, um, helps us stay grounded, and remembering to keep the patient at the center of all that we do. We're here in the OR at St. John's Live. It's going on right outside us right this moment. So we look at this as our armor, protects us from radiation. It's very hectic, but it's, it's controlled chaos. All right, what do we got here? So there's total need, uh, sorry, need for four and three. I think St. John's is a very, very special place. Um, it's really high tech. For a community hospital, it's like an academic center. Almost six years ago, we were able to get the hospital to buy the first robot, and uh, now we're the largest orthopedic robotic center in the country. When you walk through the door, there's just a different feeling when you come in. Hi. Good morning. That you're in a sacred space. How can Great. I help you? I work here with my dear friend, Kathy. We were RNs together. We still are licensed RNs at the old hospital back in the 80s. And we worked together for a few years. And now we have returned to give back. Just checking in for a C-section. Fantastic. An average day on labor and delivery, uh, can be a host of many things, uh, depending, of course, on the patient, but the experience is always enjoyable and to be a part of the energy here. There's nothing more exciting and more thrilling. Welcome to the world. We do have our moms that are in labor, and we have some scheduled C-sections today, um, which is very normal for us. This is our number two. We have a daughter who's four and a half, and we did a C-section with her, so we're doing a repeat C-section. I like having everything planned. <laughs> um, so I just got called uh, from the outside hospital. Um, she's going to be coming uh, open chest, central via ECMO, uh, with the balloon pump in the groin. Um, she probably has about a liter of blood in the chest, uh, chest tube, so we're definitely going to have to go explore in the operating room. Okay, and you've got the team available. The team's all ready, at the bedside ready to go. Any particular so equipment we need, Impella? I think we have every device that we need, but we really need to figure out uh, kind of what the issue is and um, how we're going to fix it. They told me that she's a, a young female that um, has a, a young child at home. This time, Josie, um, she just had open heart surgery. I could tell that she has a lot of blood inside her chest. She probably lost about a liter of blood just on transport. And um, she definitely is going to have to go back to the operating room to make sure there's no bleeding anywhere and really assess kind of what we need to do to stabilize her. So um, I think her chance of recovery is maybe only about 5 or 10 percent. Dr. Lee and his team talked to me and told me that they couldn't give me a prognosis, that the time was crucial and that. It's very close to home for me. She's very young. She's actually very close to the same age as my wife. We have young, three young children at home, and she has a young one-year-old at home. And so in my mind, you know, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm praying that everything we do, that she has a, a chance to at least wake up. So this is... Uh St. John's Cafeteria. This is my happy place. There's been a lot of really important research showing that gastrointestinal cancers are potentially preventable based on what we eat. I try and practice what I preach. So my mind tells me one thing, but my heart steers me somewhere else. And I deal with this conflict on a, on a daily basis. How can you ignore something that says crave-worthy cookies? 
I've always thought that to build a salad, you need a base. Lettuce. So I'll throw in some olives. Slap on a little hummus. We need a little bit of color, so why not throw on some tomatoes, mushrooms, maybe a couple cucumbers. No. Today is a breakthrough day. I feel like I've finally got to the point that I can say to my patients that I practice what I preach. A typical day in taking care of stroke is chaotic and hectic. Um, any minute you have to drop everything you're doing to be able to treat someone who's having a stroke. When any patient arrives, um, they're quickly evaluated by the emergency room team and our vascular neurologists. So let's ask you a few questions, sir. How old are you? In this patient, he went to bed normal last night and he woke up this morning with a complete inability to, to speak, understand speech, and completely paralyzed on his right side. The prognosis in patients like this all depends on their imaging. His, his prognosis looks really good because his imaging shows us that he has a large amount of brain that's salvageable. This guy's likely to do very well. So everything went perfectly, smoothly, no complications. Lisey's doing great, baby's doing great. You guys wanna come meet the little pumpkin? Among the many unique qualities of St. John's is playing the lullaby when a new baby is born. I think it just shows the excitement that the hospital feels, regardless of the time of day. Uh, it's just a happy moment, and to commemorate it with a lullaby is just part of the sweetness that the hospital provides. Josie had heart surgery for a coronary artery problem and that was great but it didn't solve the problem her heart was stunned and not working well so they put her on ECMO but ECMO is, is good but it's not as good as full cardiac support so uh, Dr. Lee converted her to the Impella which is basically an artificial heart that has full flow capabilities so the heart doesn't have to do anything it's just it's to sit there and recover. The next step is really to get her back into the intensive care unit and start to recover her. She's not out of the woods, but she's starting to turn the corner. Well, St. John's does things that other health centers don't do. People who are without anyone else at the end of life for whatever reason, and they're in the last probably couple of days of their life here at St. John's, and we are called in, and I work in the No One Dies Alone program, NOTA program, um, sitting with patients who are terminally ill and uh, comforting them on their journey from here to there. I, I, I think it's important that everybody has some dignity at the end of life, uh, and usually it's your family or your friends who are around your bedside, but when there's no one, it, it speaks to a sadness that is kind of prevalent, and so we take care of each other. It's just a small piece of what so many people do here. And it's every day, all day, here at St. John's. Josie is hard to show more and more uh, heart function. I was actually able to wean her off the device. So we actually got the breathing tube out right uh, Mother's Day morning, if I remember correctly. When I actually woke up, um, I couldn't move myself. And I just heard people talking, but I didn't know who they were. Um, the only person that I actually could recognize was my husband's voice. Oh, 
a lot of things came to my head because my mom actually passed away for heart failure. And I was like, I cannot believe that I'm actually going through the same thing as my mom. With a small baby. I just wanted to hug him and tell him that everything was going to be okay. Y agradecerle a él por haber puesto ese que. I think that's very inspiring for everybody because every case is like this. Everybody has a family member. Everybody has, you know, moms, dads, brothers, sisters. Each life matters. That's why we do what we do. I will try to fix you. With the help of our donors and our foundation, we were able to have every device under the sun, the best devices that we could possibly need to offer this type of care. And that's really the only way we're able to offer this type of service to our community.